Today, I'm gonna to tell you five of the most common guitar practice mistakes that are killing your gains. This is gonna be that list of five mistakes where if I had a dollar for every time I saw somebody make one of these five mistakes when they practice, everybody on the Forbes richest people list would move down by one. The first mistake is practicing at the top speed of your hands versus the top speed of your brain and of your ears. Now, here's what I mean. When it comes to playing guitar fast, there are multiple levels of being able to play fast. One is your gun to the head top speed. This is the fastest you can physically move your hands if your life depended on it. But then below that gun to the head top speed are a whole lot of other guitar speed thresholds. Things like your ability to keep your hands in sync. You've got a top speed for that. You've got your top speed of being able to play in time. Top speed of playing without excessive tension. Top speed of playing without unwanted string noise and so on. And then below all of that is your ability to keep track of the quality of each note in real time. Here's what I mean by that. If I play a scale sequence at even a moderate tempo, not terribly fast, like this. Could you tell, if you were playing this instead of me, could you tell while you were playing, not after you stopped, but while you were playing, could you tell what the quality was like of each note? That could you tell if all the notes were clean? Could you tell if there was any sloppy string noise? Could you also pay attention to how relaxed your body was? Could you lock in all the notes in time with the click if you had to? And again, could you do all of that while you're playing? Now most people, they play through an exercise once and then they stop and then they can kind of backtrack and try to analyze were the notes all clean? Was I relaxed or did I have to relax after I finished playing? Those types of things. And that's fine, that's better than nothing for sure. But the ultimate level you wanna to get to is being able to process the quality of what you're playing in real time while the notes are going by. This is what I call the threshold of being able to follow the notes in real time. Sorry, I don't have a sexy name for it. Any tempo that's above your threshold of being able to follow all the notes in real time where you're practicing, for most people is practicing too fast because if you're above that threshold, you're not able to pay attention to all the things you need to pay attention to while you're playing. And that is where a lot of your sloppy mistakes, two hand synchronization breakdowns, excessive tension, flare ups and so on, that's where all that stuff comes from. Now on the flip side of that, we've got the second mistake, which believe it or not, is practicing too slowly. Yes, it is possible to practice too slowly. Take for example, sweep picking and the common problem of nodes bleeding together, especially when you've got finger rolling happening like this. <laughs> Sounds pretty bad. But for most people, this bleeding noise only happens when you begin to approach your top speed or your gun to the head top speed. If you slow down enough, that problem goes away. And if you practice at tempos where the problem doesn't even come up, you are completely wasting your time since your brain and your ear has nothing to focus on. So the lesson here is when you become aware of a specific mistake in your playing, like you know that you've got a string bleeding issue to fix, you've got to find the tempo that's right below or right at the level where the problem first begins to enter your playing and practice like swirling around that little threshold so that you have full control over the notes because you're practicing slowly enough to control the notes, but it's also fast enough to cause the problem to happen, so it requires your full concentration, but again, it's still slow enough for you to stay in control. That's how you fix the problem. The third mistake that's killing your gains is ignoring your picking hand when you practice and only watching your fretting hand. Now, to some degree, this is understandable because when you were a beginner, you had to focus so hard on just putting the right finger on the right fret, on the right string, in the right space between frets and getting the note to ring clearly without buzzing. The problem develops is if that's all you ever do when you practice, because guess what? That's how your picking hand ends up with all kinds of inefficiencies, bad habits, and tension problems that are gonna slow your playing way down, make it impossible to build any real speed, and make it really hard to keep your hands in sync. So your assignment moving forward is to split your awareness between your fretting hand and your picking hand. Whenever you're practicing anything technically demanding, especially something you're trying to build speed with, still spend some time watching your fretting hand as before, of course, but spend at least half of your time paying attention to and watching closely your picking hand. Make sure that your pick is moving as efficiently as possible. Make sure that your pick doesn't wobble inside of your grip. Make sure that your picking grip is optimized. Make sure your picking hand is relaxed. All of these things are going to allow you to achieve more accurate, more consistent, and more effortless, and yes, faster guitar playing. Now the fourth mistake that's killing your gains is only watching your hands from one angle. So take a look here. This is how most guitar players watch their hands. I call this the top down view of your picking hand and your fretting hand. Now this is certainly much better than not watching your hands at all, 
But this view comes with a lot of blind spots where you're gonna miss some of the inefficiencies that can develop into bad habits if left untreated. And you're also going to see some inefficiencies that you think are way worse than they really are. In the case of the picking hand, just looking down at your hand makes it very hard to tell if your pick is bouncing away from the strings or if it's staying close to the strings. And obviously you want the pick to be as close to the strings as possible for each note. So you wanna watch your picking hand both from the front in front of a mirror or in front of a webcam. And you also wanna watch your picking hand from the side so you can watch for any of these inefficiencies taking place and fix them while you practice. Now in the case of the fretting hand, the issue with looking down at the fretting hand is it can cause you to overreact to what you think you see happening. I often have guitar players come to me and say, hey Mike, I've got a severe issue with finger independence and my pinky is flying when I play. But then I watch them play and I don't notice the problem. And the reason for the discrepancy is because they're watching their fretting hand from the top down and I'm watching it head on. When you watch your favorite guitar players, you're also only watching them from the front most of the time. But if you came behind them and you looked over their shoulder, I would bet you will see their pinky finger flying a lot more than you ever realized. That's because looking down at your fretting hand gives you the least flattering view of what is happening in your fingers. Just because the finger is flying away from the strings isn't necessarily bad as long as the finger is relaxed. Because your fingers are interconnected throughout your wrist. You're not gonna be able to fully have all fingers be 100% completely independent. They're going to react, especially the pinky finger is gonna react to some extent when the other fingers are fretting notes. What you want is you wanna make sure that this pinky finger stays relaxed as the other fingers are playing. And as long as that's happening and you see the pinky finger flying up a little bit, that's not the end of the world. And for most people, it's not even worth the time worrying about. And finally, mistake number five. This is probably the most controversial one on the list, and that is looking for exercises to develop skills. For example, say you want to improve your two-hand synchronization. So you go to Google and you type two-hand synchronization exercises, and you're gonna find a truckload of them. The problem is none of these exercises exercises are going to improve your synchronization unless and until you know the exact guitar technique elements that make synchronization happen. Things like how you're supposed to hold the pick so it doesn't wobble in your hand and need to reset for a microsecond after each note, which breaks down your synchronization. Or being able to hit the string with enough volume to get the notes to come out while keeping the fretting hand relaxed and letting the string slap against the fretting hand finger, creating this sensation of your hands being in sync for each note. This is a tip I learned from Tom Hess, by the way. Being able to do all of that, plus other elements that are way beyond the scope of this video, is what's gonna give you two-hand synchronization. So what that means is, unless you're a complete beginner who's been playing guitar for like a month, you already have a whole bunch of licks and exercises and parts of solos and things like this that you can simply isolate and create exercises out of any time you want. You don't need to go out and look for exercises, you already have them. Now, of course, there are some exceptions to what I'm saying, obviously, but by and large, this is what holds most people back. It's not knowing exactly what you're supposed to focus on when you practice to develop the exact skill you want to improve. And speaking of knowing what to focus on when you practice any exercise so you can reach your goals with it much faster, at least in the area of guitar speed, I can help you with that in my free masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is is a special way to practice where you don't have to do any slow practice at all, and all it takes is about 15 or 20 minutes of guitar practice time per day, and if you do what I talk about in this masterclass, it's gonna help you see some pretty significant speed gains very quickly. If you wanna check it out, hit the link in the description of this video, or go to the page on the screen right now, enter your email address, I'll send you the video for free. And now that you know what not to do when you practice guitar, the next step is to figure out how do you put it all together into a set of needle-moving guitar practice schedules that are gonna help you improve no matter how much or how little practice time you've got and help you improve almost every single time you pick up your guitar. I talk about how to do this in this video right here. I highly recommend you watch it next.